Hi, I'm Nakoda Davis. I'm 30 years old and I'm a Team GB Judo athlete and a BEA ambassador. I'm a double world medalist. So I was Commonwealth champion in 2014 in Glasgow and I represented Team GB at the Olympics in Rio in 2016. Mental health is really important to me because me personally, I've been through mental health lows and highs and I feel like they at some points have been a huge part of my life so I think talking about it and discussing it is really really important. I think often when you're in a mental health low you feel totally alone, you feel like nobody else is going through what you're going through and it's a dark place to be sometimes. If more people speak about it more people will realise they're not alone in those situations and I try to look at it it as it's just a moment in time and it's something that's going to pass. I suffered a concussion in 2019 which actually took me out of the sport for um, two plus years and I actually missed the Tokyo Olympics because of it. I just felt it was too risky, I didn't want to risk another setback because I felt like also my mental health was in such a fragile state that another setback could potentially like push me over the edge and I, and I kind of chose I chose myself and I chose health and I chose feeling better. Nobody ever really spoke about like the mental side of things um, when you have a concussion. So the, the anxiety that you feel or the depression that you can feel with it. Um, and it is a symptom of concussion. I didn't just fall into a depressive or an anxious state out of nowhere. It was kind of triggered by the concussion. That was really difficult to deal with, especially in the pandemic because Everyone had anxiety around what was going to happen, especially with the Olympics being that year. We didn't know whether it was going ahead. We didn't know whether it was being delayed. Even if you weren't an elite sports athlete, you had, an, you know, had, you had anxiety around, what does this mean? Am I going to get COVID? Am I going to get really unwell? You know, you had all these things. So I had that on top of feeling just rubbish every day, just feeling crap, not feeling myself. It was a really, really like long journey. It wasn't just like a quick thing or I could go on medication or I could just uh, speak to a therapist and I'd be fixed within you know weeks it was uh, months it took a very very long time to kind of physically start feeling better but also mentally with that as well and as I physically got better with my symptoms um, I mentally started feeling better as well so for me they were so closely linked um, and I just kind of wish I'd knew, like known that at the start there is a lot of pressure on you there is a lot of expectation, expectation that you put on yourself, but also expectation from those around you, those who support you, your family, your friends, your fans. And I think that can put a lot of strain on your mental health. And it's really important as an athlete, you know how to deal with those. You know how to talk about them and you know how to overcome them. I genuinely wouldn't be as strong as I am if I, I you know, didn't choose the path of being an elite athlete. I wouldn't be as resilient. I don't think I'd understand the value in giving your all to something day in and day out and not knowing actually if you're going to reap the benefits and the rewards of that straight away. It's not immediate gratification. For the Olympics you have to work for four plus years, you work in Olympic cycles for one day. That teaches you how to, to dig in, to be strong, to be resilient. You're not going to just give up on the first turn. It's not just a straight path to success, it's a, a winding road and I think in some of my really dark places and some of my bad injuries I don't think I would have got through them if I kind of didn't have this kind of like elite athlete mindset. I think the biggest thing I took from everything that I'd been through was to break before you're broken and that's like kind of like a motto I live by now it's like break before you're broken. Ultimately if you've got nothing left in the tank when you're faced with adversity it's very very hard to overcome it. I think as an elite athlete you often think no I can't take my foot off the gas and actually you can sometimes and actually it's better to sometimes. Getting pregnant was massive for me in many ways. First, it switched me off mentally from even thinking about judo and sport and kind of everything that I'd been thinking decades before that. All the um, amazing hormones that come with pregnancy and stuff was just, I just started to feel better. And as I got towards the end of my pregnancy, I just was feeling more like myself. I feel like I'm, I'm coming back, I'm a different, athlete, I'm a mum athlete now, you know, I, there's, I can't be one without the other now. Sometimes I would stew over a session that was rubbish for a day, two days, and it would really affect my mood, it affect everything, and it's like, right, once I leave the training, I'm just focused on my daughter, and kind of all those other things I try to leave kind of at training or at the competition. It's not to say that they, I don't think about them, they don't bother me, I'm very much still an elite athlete and I've got that mindset, but it just gives me perspective, better perspective, I think.